Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week with me, Naked Scientist Hannah Critchlow. This week we open our ears to crunch a data question recently downloaded from the Naked Scientist inbox. Hi, I'm Dan from Malvern. Uh, I have uh, a telephone line coming into the house, two twisted wires as everybody else does around here. How is it possible for a, a telephone conversation, a download to one or two computers, and someone else listening to a program and maybe even watching BBC News, how, how does that all happen at the same time? I'd be interested to know the answer to that. So how can a single telephone line simultaneously download all of that data? When you talk into a phone, the vibrations in the air that make up the sound are converted into vibrations in the electrical current carried by the copper wire of the telephone line. In the same way that your voice is made up of different pitches, this electrical vibration can be a wide range of different frequencies. But, according to Mark Smith, network engineer and telecommunications consultant, a telephone call uses a narrow range of frequencies. Basically, there's a pair of wires from the local exchange all the way to your phone, but the telephone conversations are actually quite a low frequency signal. They only got up to 4 kilohertz. This leaves a lot of other frequencies that can transfer data above the range of human hearing. Using an electronic filter, you can transfer data at frequencies above the range that you can hear. A modem, or modulator-demodulator, converts digital data into these vibrations. As this is done at vibrations of at least 25,000 hertz, you can send voice and internet data along the same wire at the same time without interfering with your telephone conversation. The modem uses all the, the frequencies up to probably about 10 megahertz, and it divides the frequencies into bands, a bit like the... Um, spectrum of a rainbow, and based on how good your line is, allocates uh, different frequencies to different parts of the band. The things like um, your YouTube and your um, file transfer and you're watching your uh, internet television, they're all data that needs to go as noughts and ones over the line. All that data is split into packets of data, and it's sent over over the line using a, a very special modem that decides the maximum amount of data it can get over that and works out how to do that. With things like video, for example, if the line is good enough, you'll always get that, but if the line isn't good enough, then it will start to break up. Um, if you're transferring things like files, if the line's really good, it'll be really quick, and if the line's not very good, it'll be very slow. On the forum, Evan AU adds that these packets of data each have an address on the front and a return address, like letters in the postal service. The network equipment uses this address to send each packet to the right destination. This means that, even though the packets are sent mixed up and out of sequence, the data doesn't get scrambled. We next move on to reflect on a question just in. My name is Jay Shaw and I'm from Greenhive in Kent. My question for the Naked Scientist is whether you can make an infinitely powerful laser just using mirrors. Thank you. So, could simply adding more mirrors create a more powerful laser? Send us your thoughts. You can tweet at Naked Scientists, write on our Facebook page, email chris at thenakedscientist.com or join in the debate on our forum, which is at nakedscientists.com slash forum. The Naked Scientist's Question of the Week, brought to you in association with the How to Wisman Foundation, supporting science and education from alpha to omega.